Hollywood movies have these stunning one-line, you know, love expressions written for them. There's music playing in the background. It's glorious. It's fake. It's not real. And uh, we forget that. And we can. It's so easy to get sucked into this perfect world, and where everyone's putting their best foot forward, and we live with the person that we live with, and we see them at their best and their worst. And it's you and me, babe, whatever comes. Knowing bigger hands are holding us. And our greatest days are ahead of us. Growing in love, Growing in love. learning to be a better us. Hi there, welcome to A Better Us and to our home. There's an old saying that comparison is the thief of joy. And with today's technology, the truth of that statement has become more obvious now That's than ever. So true. Social media has provided the stage where everyone puts their best foot forward, mm -hmm. which can easily trip up the contentment and self-esteem of those scrolling by and right. comparing. And when that thief sets its sights on our marriage relationship, mm -hmm. What's stolen can be devastating. Coming up, best-selling marriage author Gary Thomas provides some valuable insights into how we can protect our relationship by stopping the comparison thief. And later, author Rhonda Stoppi reminds us that there may be other eyes and ears in the home watching how mom and dad mm -hmm. live out their relationship. She suggests nine important things to teach our kids about marriage. And as usual, there's lots of conversation in the kitchen with our friends and kitchen couples. CFL football great Mike Pinball Clemens and his wife Diane. And recording artists, author and speakers Dan and Danielle McCauley. We're about to get started, so stay with us. If we want to begin a cherishing marriage, we know it has to begin with the way we think about our spouse. Because the Bible says in Romans 12, 2, that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. So let me give you an image. If you want to go from just a ho-hum marriage to a cherishing marriage, to begin to think about your spouse in a different way. I want to go back to the Garden of Eden. For a brief period of time, Eve was literally the only woman in the world. There was no one Adam could compare her to. He couldn't say, well, she might be more athletic than this one, but she's not quite as intelligent or humorous as that one. For all Adam knew, Eve defined not only what a woman is, but what a woman is supposed to be. And for that same period of time, Adam was literally the only man in the world. Eve couldn't compare him to any other man. She couldn't downgrade him because he wasn't as strong or emotionally involved as another man. For all Eve knew... Adam was who her husband, a man is and, and, and what he's supposed to be. And if we want to enter a cherishing marriage, men, we have to get to the point of Song of Songs 6 9, where the husband says of his wife, My dove, my perfect one, is the only one. I'm not going to compare her to anyone negatively. I'm only going to receive her as she is. And that's because comparison leads to contempt. It amazes me, comparing the weaknesses of our spouse to the strengths of another. I would just ask you, how has it ever worked? Does it ever make you feel better after a session of negative comparison? Do you ever say, oh, I feel so much better about life now? Or, or do you feel worse? Has it ever motivated your spouse to improve and grow as a spouse? Or has it probably discouraged them when they've seen the light go out of your eyes and, and the way you look at them with contempt or disrespect? And yet often in marriage, we seem to be like that kid with the loose tooth that is about to come out and he keeps pushing it with his tongue. Does it still hurt? Yeah, it still hurt. Yeah. Well, if we want to enter a cherishing marriage, we have to get rid of all comparison and saying, I'm making a commitment of contentment from this day forth. This is my Eve. Wives, you would say, this is my Adam. This is the only woman, the only man in the world. They define for me what a husband or wife is and what a husband or wife is supposed to be. I remember praying for, to God early on in my marriage, and I don't know why I prayed this prayer. I hadn't heard somebody else pray it. But I said, God, I, I pray that Lisa will define for me what a beautiful woman is, that she'll be my plumb line, that all other women would be measured by her, not her, toward all other women. God answered that prayer, and I didn't realize this when I began praying it 35 years ago, how much satisfaction it results in 
Because the reality is my definition of the most beautiful woman in the world ages with my wife. And that leads to a very satisfied and content husband. But, but I don't want to reduce this just to physical appearance. It's, it's their mental abilities, their, their, their athletic abilities, their intellectual abilities, their relational abilities. We don't wonder what it would be like being married to anyone else. Comparison leads to contempt. If we want to cherish our spouse, we receive them as they are and we accept them as they are. We are in the kitchen with our kitchen couples. We yeah. have Mike and Diane Clemens and Hi. Dan and Danielle McCauley. And we just heard once again from one of our favorite teachers, mm -hmm. Gary Thomas. Yeah. And these lessons from Adam and Eve and some, some great points there when you think about it. Yeah, they were the only two there. <laughs> and so that was kind of like paradise, I think. I, I've heard yeah. it said that because, uh, you know, he didn't have to hear about all the other men she could have married. And, uh, and she didn't have a mother-in-law. So, you know, <laughs> that's like paradise right there. <laughs> you know, and there's no comparison to any other women's or men. So, yeah, it's, Absolutely. it's good. Yeah, so this whole comparison idea that he calls poison, that, mm. uh, that can be uh, a real uh, challenge in marriages. So we obviously want to avoid that, but we could take this lesson from in, Adam and In Eve. today's day and age, though, you guys, isn't comparison like a huge problem because of, mm -hmm. well, social media, because of movies? I mean, it's just yeah. everywhere, the ideal yeah you know comparisons create um it, they stir up envy in us mm. and i um always say when i'm speaking to women because it is such a huge topic with social media and all this stuff is that envy only tells us half truths it only will show you or make you think of the blessing and not the struggle or what i call the grit um, or sorry the gift and not the grit and uh, what I mean by that is like, let's take this screen, for example, uh, this shot of us, we're, we're put together, I'm you know dressed, I've got my makeup on and my hair done, but I actually have my pajama pants on <laughs> that no one <laughs> sees. And so we have to remember that when we are looking and comparing our marriage to other people's marriage, we're not in our in their homes with them. We're not in the middle of the fights. We're not, um, you know, living the struggle with them. We're only probably seeing what's glossed up at church mm -hmm. or when we're at our best at work or you know whatever the situation may be. And so uh, it's important to remember that uh, that you know there's more than meet the meets the eye. Absolutely, there's dirty dishes right over there. <laughs> 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 yes, there there's, is. There's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, on, on social media, like you said, it's the glossy version. It's the perfect version. On movies and TV, it's the perfect version. All those romantic guys in the in the Hollywood movies have these stunning one-line, you know, love expressions written for them. There's music playing in the background. It's glorious. It's fake. It's not real. <laughs> And uh, we forget that, and we can. It's so easy to get sucked into this perfect world, and where everyone's putting their best foot forward, and we live with the person that we live with, and we see them at their best and their worst. Mm -hmm. So, absolutely. And the idea is being committed to them no matter what, and uh, even at the best and the worst. for better, for worse, richer, for poorer, sickness, mm. health. You know, covers those, it all. That sounds like something we yeah. committed to early on. Yeah. <laughs> Mike and Diane. I would say um, just love your spouse for who they are. Like love them for that raw person that they are. Uh, I think over the last two years with COVID, um, it's really exposed a lot of us. Um, I know being at home, it's like, I think I've never gone so long without wearing makeup, right? It's like I get up, I keep on my pajamas most of the day, do my meetings in just a top, like Danielle was said, and still have on your pajama bottoms, no makeup, just every single day. And that tells me, and my husband will come to me and he'll say, oh, you're so beautiful today. And I'm thinking, I don't have on any makeup, no lipstick, no lashes, you know, but it's loving your spouse for that raw person that they are. That's the important thing. What's on the inside, not on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, is so important, I, I believe, to be happy for people too. Um, because when we talk about that couple, that couple may be the perfect couple, right? Right? 
but she's my <laughs> perfection. And and while they might be, uh, they you know, she might be perfect for him, right? right. Um, this is the one who is perfect that's right. for me, right. and Good that's point. what matters. And exactly. so we 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 cast these visions and and kind of you know of beauty and perfection and all the things that that's great, right? And and that's that's their perfection, and I don't want to take that away from them. I don't want to say that you know they don't have something real, right? Uh, but but I do know that I have something real, and and uh, and. And this is where I'm committed, and and yes, I, I, I I love her with all that I have, and and if someone else uh, feels the same way about somebody else, that's beautiful, that's amazing, and so we encourage that, we want to see that, right? But yeah. but this this woman right here, this is the one for me yeah. forever. Yeah, and I love that, Mike. It, it, you know. It, it's how you, like Gary said, it's how you think about mm. your spouse. It's yeah. it's not dwelling on the negative. Because we all, like Diane said, we're raw, we're real. We all have the bad, the good. We all have morning breath. We, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, right? it's, we're real. <laughs> this is it. She, she actually but doesn't. She doesn't. <laughs> oh, she is perfect. Well, I, I love the way <laughs> Gary put it. <laughs> Gary said that his definition of the most beautiful woman in the world ages with my wife he says I love and so that. that's, that's right. so nice that's and so, so uh, to not o only think that but to actually verbalize that as well yeah. to her mm -hmm. and and then and yeah. the wife to the husband as well verbalize things that reinforce that truth yes. if you feel that way verbalize it <laughs> get in the habit of that it's, it's forming those good habits that you know build up your spouse yeah. because it builds up your marriage uh, mm -hmm. when you build up your spouse. Yeah. And so I I really like that. Thanks, yeah. you guys. This has been a really good one. Yeah, we'll yeah. be back with some more thoughts uh, after another teaching. It's always good to, to hear something and then back talk and be able to just share. Digest and a little bit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't go away. Isn't it our goal to have the kind of marriage that makes our children want to get married? Yeah. Exactly. You know, they, they know we're not perfect. They see yeah. us every day. Yeah. But they know that marriage can be good because they see that you do it well. Uh, you don't do it perfectly, but you can do it well. Hey friends, Ron and Ann here. We're so glad you're with us at A Better Us and we pray your marriage is blessed as you take this in. Be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and enjoy this video. was what our kids would say when their daddy would waltz into the kitchen and kiss me long and hard on the lips. They would cover their eyes and they would say, Dad, that's gross. It's been over a decade since our kids moaned and disgust at our display of affection. While the kids acted like they were offended when daddy's first stop was to kiss mama in reality, it's the one encounter that gave them a sense of security. Even though they weren't able to put it into words, that routine made them feel safe. Years later, our daughter went away to college and she discovered a valuable lesson when one day she said to her friends, don't you just hate it when your mom and dad kiss in front of you? When most of her friends replied their parents didn't show much, much affection, she realized the uniqueness of having parents who regularly displayed their love. When we asked how this uniqueness made Meredith feel, although we always acted like it was gross, Meredith said, it made us feel safe, like you guys were gonna be together forever. Wow, right? It's the little things that we do in front of our kids that often have the most powerful impact. As our four children grew up, it was our prayer that God would help us train them how to have a marriage that would last a lifetime, a marriage without regrets. Let's look quickly at nine things we wanted to teach our kids about marriage. Number one, you never find a sense of worth from another person. In 30 years of my husband and I mentoring couples, we've learned many marriages are in trouble because of unmet expectations with the main disappointment in believing that their happiness and worth lies in how well they are treated by their spouse. You're on the right track when you learn that you are treasured by the one who loves you so much he gave his very life to purchase you with his blood. When your identity and worth is built up with your relationship with Christ, you will no longer need to look to your spouse or anyone else to make you feel fulfilled. No relationship can fill the void that only God can fill. 
Number two, marriage is a covenant with God. In this day of throwaway marriages, it's important to train your children that you and your spouse are committed to keep your marriage covenant. Your kids will never be more secure than when they know mom and dad are committed to love one another for the rest of their lives. Number three, be a peacemaker. Titus 2 says that we are not to be argumentative. If being argumentative is a habit in your marriage, it's never too late to change. Realize how your propensity to quarrel will be passed on to your children. If you want to raise children who walk in peace, let peace begin with you. Number four, forgive as many times as necessary. James 5.16 promised this effective, fervent prayer of a righteous will accomplish much. When a spouse is stuck in sin and unforgiveness, they quench the spirit in their life and they render their prayers powerless. If you want to raise forgiving children who can pray powerfully from your example, let them see forgiveness freely given in your marriage and your family. Number five, believe the best about the other person. 1 Corinthians 13 says, love believes all things. This means to believe the best about another. All too often, conflict in marriage arises because couples assign wrong motives to each other's actions. If your kids have siblings, this is a great place to train them how to take wrong thinking captive and choose to believe the best about others. Number six, let kindness be your default. Be kind one to another was my mantra to my kids. But if you want your kids to grow up to be kind to their spouse and to their children, they need to see kindness as the normal way of life in your home. Number seven, loving Christ with your whole heart is the secret to loving others well. When you press in to loving Christ with your whole being, the Spirit will empower you to love with Jesus' love. When this happens, your love for your spouse will shine brightly, Christ's love to your children, and show them how loving Jesus is the key to a loving marriage. Number eight, develop servanthood. The happiest marriages are when both husband and wife develop this serving mentality. When love is expressed through service, you'll likely raise children who show love through acts of service. Let this begin with you. Your selfless, loving service will display to your kids Christ's love in action. Number nine, keep your eyes on Christ. One of your greatest witnessing tools is a Christ-honoring marriage. When you make loving Christ your life's priority, your selfless love for your spouse will reverberate His love to your children and generations to follow, and you'll have no regrets. And we are back in the kitchen with our kitchen couples, Mike mm -hmm. and Diane, Dan and Danielle. Okay, guys, there was a lot of wisdom in that list. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it was, she just let it rip. And there <laughs> was a lot of good stuff in that. And 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 in feverishly. That. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the idea of passing it on to our kids, mm -hmm. this idea of, of marriage and, and what it should be like. In fact, the, the ministry that that we lead, A Better Us is part of Heart to Heart Marriage and Family Ministries. Mm -hmm. And, and our, our vision is to see every marriage become a loving union that creates a safe family mm -hmm. haven, mm -hmm. building a legacy of hope for future generations. Mm -hmm. Love it. And so what you do, what we do in our marriage, not only impacts the two of us, mm -hmm. but even uh, more so probably, right. The next generation of the kids. It, isn't it our goal to have the kind of marriage that makes our children want to get married? Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, they, they know we're not perfect. They see yeah. us every day, but they know that marriage can yeah. be good because they see that you do it well. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't do it perfectly, but you can do it well. But how do we do that? Yeah. And those nine ideas were, were some good, good. Uh, thought starters good for us. Yeah. <laughs> Thoughts? Yeah, it was a, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I, what warms my heart is when our three girls uh, come to me and they're like, Mom, Dad has set the standards so high. How are we going to find somebody like him? Like, you know, and I'm like, oh, that means we're doing something right. You know, when, when they see our relationship and they see the love that we have for one another, and more importantly, they see how a man is supposed to treat a woman. They see how their dad treats me. And they talk about it all the time. It surprises me sometimes, but they're watching. Like they're adults and they're still watching us and how we treat one another. It tells me that we're doing something right. They won't have much trouble trying to find a taller man. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me of a story in terms of living it out. There's a saying, I'd rather see a sermon then hear one any day, right? And, mm -hmm. and so it really is living it and practicing. It's all of these wonderful traits you can practice. It's it's not something that you have to do to show your kids. It's actually how you should live. And that living will be the story. 
Yeah. That's so good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's really good. What yeah. Mike said. That's exactly it. That list is so long that she gave. There's so many things. But really, it's the entirety of our lives that tell a story to our kids. Yeah. And, you know, it's the way we respond to crisis. It's the way we respond to others. The way we respond to each other. Um, you know, how we deal with, with things. And um, I just hope that the message that we send is a love letter to them, a love letter to each other and to mm-hmm. God. That, um, you know, we aren't perfect, like we said, but they see us, the good, bad, and the ugly too, Mm -hmm. and they see us lean in when we're struggling, when we're weak and we have failed, we lean into Jesus and to each other. And that, uh, you know, that checks everything off the list. Mm -hmm. That takes care of everything. I'm I'm thankful for the example that uh, my parents set in our home of a now 47 year old marriage. and that example that it is, you know, um, we, we have on, on past episodes talked about the dichotomy of, or the, the, the things we're trying to do of, of parenting our kids versus nurturing our marriage. And, mm-hmm. and it's, they're, not, they're not two different things, you know, in this mm-hmm. case. It's by, by, uh, by cultivating our marriage, we're parenting our kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By 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 modeling that we are we are setting them up setting to succeed. Up we're success, we're yeah. we're saying, hey, this is how you do it. And like Mike said, just by doing it, mm-hmm. um, and they'll have no i they'll have no idea. It's not it's not that I sit my boys necessarily down, and though I will and and talk to them about specific things that you should and shouldn't you know do uh, with a woman or, or the way you treat her or speak to her or everything uh it almost doesn't even matter what i say at that point it's Action speak louder it's than what words. they yeah. see me doing with you exactly. uh day in and day out um and so you know cultivating and being intentional about your marriage is good parenting um good. they're not two That's different so things good. and I, I remember a specific time where I guess I was in a bad mood. That happens once in a while, and uh, and I I said I, I said something that that was kind of cutting to Anne, but it was in front of the kids, and you know, and I didn't say anything right there to apologize. But it was later on that I was thinking about you know what I shouldn't have said that, and and then I thought you know what rather than just apologizing to Anne, I need to apologize to Anne in front of the kids yeah. because yeah, right. they heard it. And, mm-hmm. and I wanted to try to model for them, mm-hmm. you know, what swallowing your pride and, uh, and doing the right thing is. Mm-hmm. And so when the kids were there, the same ones that were there when I, I said that nasty thing, I said to Anna, honey, I, I'm so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. That was wrong of me. Please forgive me. <laughs> you know, with the kids there, I don't know why I get emotional about it. I, I just am thinking I, I want to pass on the best possible uh, example to them yeah. and so if there's some type, type of offense that happened in front of the kids make it right, right. in, front, in of front of the kids as well because yeah. that's a great example to them yeah it's developing those good habits yeah. and working on yourselves and letting the kids see that you're getting better all yeah. the time <laughs> well this has been a great yeah. discussion and uh, as yeah. always thanks for joining us our kitchen couples yeah. and um Stay with us. We've got some more yeah. Better Us coming up. Don't go away. Right. Well done is better than well said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>Hi, we hope you're enjoying the show. You know, our vision at A Better Rest is to see every marriage become a loving union that creates a safe family haven, building a legacy of hope for future generations. Yeah. That's why we feel it's so important to invest in marriage relationships through producing a new episode of A Better Us every week. Absolutely. If you feel as we do that marriages are worth investing in, then please consider joining us as a member of A Better Us with a monthly donation of $25. You'll be making a big difference in lives and families and we'll send you two of our special mugs the mugs that you see our kitchen couples using each program absolutely and be sure to send us your mug shot selfie yeah. and we'll post it on our facebook page and on our website simply visit a betterus.tv and click donate to mm-hmm. set up your automatic monthly giving yeah. god bless you and thank you so much for making this program possible and helping us strengthen marriages so we can all become a better us
You know, one thing is for sure, if you base your love life, if you base this relationship yeah. we call marriage on your emotions, you are in for one crazy roller coaster right. ride because our emotions are fickle and they change and they're influenced by everything from a lack of sleep right. to a lack of food yep. uh, to something that just happened 30 minutes ago. So you, you got to really get a grip on this idea of what it means to be in a committed covenantal yes. relationship that does not depend on emotions. And, and by the way, this, you know the word promise? This promise that you made when you got married is, it's pro, it's active, it's mm -hmm. something in the future promise if you look at the Latin root of that we won't take the time to get into that uh, <laughs> but just know that when you are making a promise you're saying I promise that in the future I will rely on this and that is my commitment to you yeah and that's not about how you feel in the moment right. at all and we wouldn't even value commitment if we didn't understand that about how the DNA of our emotional landscape it is fickle it's changing mm -hmm. commitment is not and there wouldn't even be a value in commitment Love isn't about sentiment as much as it is about showing up. Right. Staying right here, whether it feels great to me or not, and trusting that like the tide, the, the feelings will rush back in. They come back in out of those shared moments, even when we show up and we're feeling empty and just wait for something fun, right. something funny that refreshes that love. So bottom line, don't get bent out of shape. Don't yeah. get crazy because, oh, I don't have the feelings today. The right. tide is just receding and it's about to come back in. Hang tight. It's been another great show. We're so glad you joined us. It was such a good challenge by Gary Thomas to avoid a very dangerous poison that's mm -hmm. threatening a lot of marriages, and that's the habit of comparison. From social media to Hollywood to magazines, we are flooded with images of what the ideal man or woman looks like and acts like. We know they're not real, but the temptation is there to begin to resent your spouse for not measuring up to that ideal. And before you know it, an emotional distance can begin to develop. That's why it's so important that you learn to recognize this poison before it does any damage. Mm -hmm. Think about what lies you may be believing. Remember that your love is based on the unshakable foundation of the vows you made at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And choose to think the best about your spouse and say those things out loud. That kind of outward expression of your inward commitment will go a long way in strengthening your marriage. And it gets noticed by the younger eyes and ears in your mm -hmm. home too. That's for sure. I think we all want to model for our kids the kind of marriage that makes them want to get married someday. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you're perfect, just that you show them that two imperfect people can make something beautiful. But maybe you're thinking it's too late. You're so broken and your kids have seen and heard things they shouldn't have. You need to know that it is not too late. If you'd like someone to pray with you about your marriage or family situation, you can call our prayer line. It's available 24 seven and we'll connect you with someone who would love to pray with you. You may also wanna check out the many resources available for you at our website at abetterus.tv. Thanks again for stopping by and remember with God, there is always hope to become a better us. Hey friends, we really hope you're enjoying the marriage conversations here with A Better mm -hmm. Us on our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of more helpful marriage videos designed to give you hope and tools to make your marriage better. And you can see just a few options we think you might like here mm -hmm. and here. Enjoy. Oh, and make sure you subscribe by clicking here so you don't miss out on all the great marriage help we have coming your way soon.